Welcome to the latest Ever Shed Sutherland Legal Insights podcast. Hello, everyone, and, and welcome to the European Private Equity podcast covering the Spanish market. Today, with you, you will listen to Sixto de la Calle, partner, Maria Ramalle, legal director, and Ignacio Balaña, myself, partner. Uh, the three of us, together with our team, we do cover private equity and venture capital in Spain. Uh, we are very pleased uh, to address with you today uh, some of the key trends, outlook, and recent experience we, we've seen in the market uh, on the private equity arena. So, Sixto, uh, the, the first question for you today, what is the current state of play in private equity and venture capital in Spain currently? Thank you. Thank you, Ignacio. No doubt uh, 2023 has been a very complex year in private equity space in Spain. There's been a significant reduction both in the number of transactions and the M&A volumes. Just to give you some figures that we have gathered from what we see in our own deals here in Eversheds, Sutherland, in Madrid, but also what the intelligence that we have gathered from our clients, private equity houses. Uh, investment in Spain decreased to 6.8 billion from the decade high of 9.2 billion in 2022. However, the level of investments is 25 above the average of the last years. Buyout deals versus expansion capital and venture capital consistently represent the largest market share, around 54% or 3.6 billion. And in terms of what we are typically doing, Ignacio and, and, and Maria, here at Eversheds Southland in Spain, and, but also I would assume around uh, all Eversheds Southland's uh, offices in, in, in Europe, in mid-market operations, uh, with company valuations between 10 million and 100 million, the activity decreased from 3.1 billion to 1.7 billion which is quite remarkable. And then and the number of transactions also decreased from 114 to 74. The most active sectors that we see, Ignacio and Maria, is healthcare, with around represent 31%, industrial products and services, 24%, IT, 8%. And to finalize with the numbers, uh, divestment in 2023 reached a low since 2012, with only uh, 316 transactions completed and 147 completed by private equity entities. And what's the, 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 the rationale behind that, the, under, the underlying reasons that we had that to, to understand these figures and, and how uh, the market in 2023 evolved? Uh, well, there are three main reasons for this. Uh, firstly, the international political context with the war in Ukraine, the tensions between Russia and the European Union and the US has created a lot of uh, instability. Secondly, the inflation in the European Union in general and in Spain in particular has impacted the margins of the companies in Spain. And lastly, the high interest rates uh, scenarios has made it very complex for private equities to finance, to finance the deals, reducing both the deals leverage and the private equities expected returns. So this is basically the current state of plating in, in private equity and, and how we see it from here. Thank and, you. Thank you, Sixto. Truly, truly valuable input here. Maria, next one is, is for you. Are there any particular local trends that you would like to highlight to our clients, targets, and friends. What type of sponsor, investor are most active locally in Spain? Any hot sector asset, what particular focus is devoted? What's your general view on all these questions, Maria? Yes, um, thank you, Ignacio, for, for the question. Um, during this past year, we have seen that uh, private equity entities uh, have been adjusting the company's valuation. 
There is also a strong sector polarization, as as Sixto was was mentioning, and uh, private equity entities are looking for more defensive sectors, such as the agribusiness, food sector, IT, healthcare, and education, among others. Um, Generally, there is greater caution within the sector with increased competition for good assets, let's say it like that, and many transactions are left vacant for, for the less attractive ones. Although during 2023, there was a significant slowdown in transactional activity, both in investment and in divestment, we have noticed that during the first half of 2024, uh, it has shown a stronger activity and market feeling is progressively improving. Another trend to note is that deal execution is taking longer with greater due diligence requirements due to distortions in historical figures. These distortions during 2020 and 2021 were caused by, by the COVID pandemic, whilst during 2022 and 2023, they were caused, for example, by material raw, by raw material inflation. In line with this, uh, there are many transactions that require more structured offers due to uncertainty regarding the sustainability of 2023 figures. Finally, um, a good sign to to note on on the local private equity market is that banks and financing entities have continued to be present and available for transactions, despite interest rate increases that we have uh, suffered in in, in Spain during the past months. Hey, Maria. Thanks much for your input. In terms of deals that you can share with our clients, target and, and friends, where have you been in, in, involved uh, in the last months, six to Maria? Um, we have recently advised uh, a private equity, Spanish private equity entity named Sherpa Capital um, in, in the acquisition of a majority stake in, in Cristalinas. Uh, Cristalinas is a leading Spanish player in the air freshener space with uh, a strong presence in in Mexico. It was a very complex deal uh, where we had to accommodate both Sherpas and the seller's interest in a reasonable balance that at the end has created value for, for both companies and which has been a great success. Um, what about you, uh, Ignacio? Is there any deal that you would like to explain to us for our clients to to be aware of? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, we've been we've been uh, quite 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 active in, uh, in in the last two three months. We've been we've been advising uh, their capital, the Italian by origin, a uh, private equity house in, uh, in an investment in, in Miami. Uh, that was a secondary uh, buyout uh, because the, the company was, was owned by a Spanish private equity in Italy. The transaction was, 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 as you mentioned, it, 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 it was complex in terms of the antitrust, uh, in terms of the, the, the negotiation of the SPA, uh, Shareholding, shareholding agreement because part of the uh, management team reinvested in the company. We also introduced a WNI solution to the, to the transaction. So all in all, it, it, it was a very nice, but very challenging transaction and satisfactorily completed very, very recently. We are also deeply involved uh, on a different, uh, different spectrum uh, with uh, our TAC Capital, uh, a, a local private equity here in Spain, one of the say more, more sizable private equities in Spain, in the build up of Atlanta. Uh, they are basically acquired four to five, com- five companies in the last uh, six months. Uh, the idea and uh, the rationale behind of, of this build up is, is, is to create the largest uh, advisory to. Uh, medium-sized companies in Spain, and the project is huge and very challenging also in terms of the growth, because this is a very, a very 
fragmented mm-hmm. market and, and therefore uh, there is a, a big effort in consolidation. So yes, we, we, we're truly we're truly active and, and we're happy that our clients trust us on, on, on such significant transactions. Yeah. Ignacio, if I may add something, and, and I know you have been involved with with Arta Capital in all these deals, is is it the continuity that we have? Is this sort of built up structures that we are seeing here at the at the FSA Southland in Madrid that you you not only advise them in the in the very first transaction uh, first transaction, but you also continue advising the client in the build-up strategy. This is something that we are also seeing with Sherpa Capital, Maria. Uh, that we, we complete this complex transaction, but we are still working with them in the, in the build-up strategy that will continue to flow if it goes as expected in the following coming years until an exit, which is uh, somewhat to close the circle. And, and it is nice to see that, that we can go ahead with, uh, with, with, with our clients and to follow that path until closing in a build-up strategy. So this is really, yeah. really nice to see. And, and Ignacio, if, I have a question for you. What, what is the, the, the private market's outlook for the next 12 months in Spain? Some of the key vectors uh, for, for, for the next months have been addressed by Maria. It's true that the, the second half of 2024 uh, uh, we are generally positive, and our clients, uh, private equity uh, operators, are also positive in that respect. Uh, we see some of the issues addressed before, such as inflation, interest rates, improving, and, and, and such complex context, I would say, has, has, has been, in a way, discounted uh, by, by, by private equity investors. The gap Valuation expectations between sellers and, and, and buyers is, is reducing. The acquisition financing is there, and, and particularly in my experience, uh, with greater presence of, of private uh, debt providers, especially under complex structuring schemes. And all in all, uh, there is greater visibility in respect to the financial performance of the companies uh, after COVID, high inflation periods, etc. So. Good sentiment, uh, good prospects, uh, and this is bringing opportunities all around carve-outs, consolidations that we mentioned in the build-ups before. So, grow opportunities, and, and, and we're also experiencing uh, secondary uh, buyouts um, after a period where private equity remained quiet for, for all the reasons that's explained. So, uh, yes, good, good feeling and, and such general positive sentiment uh, for 2025, it's it even greater. Big ticket deals are also back. Uh, today, we, we've just seen the press, uh, the, that uh, Sylvan completed the acquisition of Idealista on a 3 billion transaction. So, so it's not only mid market uh, and, and, and mid sized companies, but also big ticket transactions are, are, are coming to the market. So. These are good news for our clients, uh, friends, and of course, consequently for, for all of us. So yes, I, I think we left behind the bad times, the good times are coming. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Ignacio. I think this is basically it. Yes, this is, this is basically it. We, we are very happy with this initiative at Emerson Sutherland. Uh, as, as you know, we are, we are producing a similar podcast uh, for all jurisdictions where Everest software operates in Europe. So feel free to connect with our uh, social media resources. Uh, thank you very much again uh, for your time. Thank you, Ignacio. Thank you, Maria. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the Evershed Sutherland Legal Insights Podcast. 